Hi everybody, welcome back to another video and today we're continuing with our medication series and we are looking at mixed insulins. Now like all our videos in this series, this is not advice about whether or not you should be taking these medications. It is purely information to show you how they work so you have a better understanding of how your diabetes is being treated. So without all that in mind, let's jump straight into the video and take a look at mixed insulins. What are mixed insulins? As the name implies, mixed insulins are two types of insulins mixed together. So we take rapid acting insulin and mix it with intermediate acting insulin to give you a very particular type of insulin coverage throughout the day. How do mixed insulins work? In order to understand mixed insulins, you need to understand the two different insulins that are mixed together. So let's start with the blue one. This is your rapid acting insulin. This one lasts four and a half hours and it is specifically designed to be taken with food, usually at the biggest meals of the day, which generally speaking will be breakfast and your evening meal. Now this is to offset the rise in your blood glucose levels that will be seen after eating carbohydrates. There's plenty of information about what carbohydrates are on the blog, so check out other, um, our other blogs on that if you want to find out more information on that. Then the other component of a mixed insulin is something called an intermediate acting insulin. Now this one lasts between 12 and 16 hours. Now mixed insulins can be taken once or twice a day depending on what your gl blood glucose profile looks like. If you only tend to have spikes in the day, your team might suggest only taking it once a day, or if you find that you're prone to having high glucose levels, particularly after the big meals in the day, and you tend to wake with high glucose levels in the morning, they might suggest having two injections a day. Now this gives you coverage for both the meals at this point, generally breakfast and dinner, to stop those carbohydrates increasing your glucose levels too much, but it also then gives you additional coverage throughout the rest of the day to offset potentially lunch and those overnight levels to stop you waking up high. You'll know if you're using a mixed insulin because these will always have a number included with them. Now this number's in reference to the distribution or the percentage of rapid insulin to the intermediate acting insulin. So for example, Humulin M3 or Novamix 30 means that it is 30% rapid acting insulin compared to 70% um, intermediate acting insulin. Whereas something like an Insuman Combi 50 will then be 50% rapid acting insulin and only 50% um, intermediate acting insulin. So it depends on what you need and what your diabetes team thinks will do the job in regards to getting your blood glucose levels under control. How much insulin will I need? As with all insulins, it depends. You essentially need what you need. The good thing about a twice a day regimen is you can mix up the doses. Sometimes with a once a day, you can't really adjust the dose based on different time points in the day. Whereas a mixed insulin, we can give more in the morning if you need more throughout the day, because obviously you eat more in the day. And then you can give yourself less in the evening to offset a drop overnight. But that's not always the case. Some people will have more of the evening meal. Some people will have more at breakfast. Some people will have the same dose at both meals. It really depends what your blood glucose levels are doing, but it does give us flexibility. How many times will I need to test my blood glucose levels? We never want people to take insulin blindly. So before you take your injection, it's always worth doing a blood glucose test to see where you're at. So generally, you'll take two blood glucose levels before your breakfast and before your evening meal, just to see where your blood glucose levels are at, to see if you want to adjust your um, insulin dose based on that glucose reading. Of course, if you feel the need, you can always do more than two tests a day, but two is generally the bare minimum with this type of insulin regimen. What are the benefits of a mixed insulin? Well, I've just mentioned one of the key benefits, and that's that it gives us a bit more flexibility in terms of adjusting the dose. So we're not just having one dose throughout the entire day. So we can give more or less depending on what's required at these different time points in the day. It also provides a smaller medication burden because it means less injections compared to something like a basal bolus regimen where you could be taking four or more injections a day. It can also offset the rises seen by food, but also give you that insulin coverage that you might need later in the day. So as I say, it's quite a robust insulin in that respect. What are the cons of mixed insulins? Well, 
Like anything, there's always a downside, and one of the downsides of a mixed insulin is sometimes you can find that you need to feed the insulin slightly. And by that, I mean you need to eat to accommodate it. Often these will be started because it will be noticed there's a distinct rise in your blood glucose levels after certain meals in the day, usually breakfast or dinner. But if you decide to go on a health kick or change your diet for whatever reason, these insulins might not be fit for purpose because remember, they're only there for the carbohydrate containing foods in your diet, particularly this rapid acting element. So if you change your breakfast from say cereal to an omelet, suddenly you're gonna be at a very high risk of hypo, low, blood glucose levels. So being on these types of insulins mean that actually you're kind of locked into your current management with regards to your diabetes management and your diet. It can also mean that you might need to eat carbohydrate containing foods at lunch and also have a bedtime snack to offset the hypo risk that might come with these um, regimens. So that is one of the major downsides. Who shouldn't be on a mixed insulin regimen? We wouldn't usually put someone on a mixed insulin regimen who has variable eating patterns. So if you're more of a grazer or you tend to miss meals, then it can be risky because as I say, this rapid acting element is only there for the carbohydrate containing food in your diet. So if you're someone that doesn't always eat breakfast, but sometimes you will, or you might skip meals throughout the day, then you're at a severe risk of low blood glucose levels when you take these about eating. So if you recognize that you're taking these medications, but you are one of those people and you're seeing low blood glucose levels, it's worth tying in with your diabetes team as soon as possible. And that's mixed insulins, everyone. I hope you found this video useful. If you want more information and you're not watching this on the blog, then check out diabetesdietguide.com. Bunch of free information all about managing diabetes. We also have our programs and consultancy services, which is designed to help you and take you that extra step in getting on top of your diabetes and improving your health. We'll leave it there. Thanks for watching and we'll see you at the next video.